。皆様、こんにちは。Welcome, everyone. Good afternoon here in Tokyo and good morning in Europe. My name is Georg Löhr. I'm the representative director, president of NRW Global Business Japan, and your host for today's meeting. Takshi Georg Löhr, NRW Global Business Japan, no daihyo shite orimasu. で本日のこのイベントのホストも務めさせていただきます。これから日本語で話を続けさせていただきます。私ども NW Global Business は、ノートラインベストファーレン州ドイツの最も大きい州で、ディスルドーフを州都とする州でございますが、その州の投資、貿易投資振興公社でございます。で、私どもは5月31日に東京都と、特に中小企業を対象とするコーポレーションプロジェクトを始めさせていただきました。ノートハイベストファーレン州と東京はそれぞれドイツと日本で最大の経済区域でございます。この交流を促すためにこういうコーポレーションプロジェクトを始めさせていただきましたこちらにウェブサイトの案内もございますそこでノートハインベストファーレン州の中で7つの都市と地域がこのプロジェクトに参加しておりますそれはアーヘン、ボーホン、ケルン、コローン、ルスルドーフ、エッセン、クレフェルト、ラインクライス、ノイスでございます。こちら、日本語でも出てます。で本日は3回目のイベントで、シュート・ドゥスルドーフを訪ねたいと思います。本日のプログラムでございますが、まず、前回同様、私の案内の後に、NW グローバルビジネス本社のアストリッペッカー、アジア・オーストラリア部長からの挨拶を賜りたいと思います。その後、すぐ、ドゥスルドーフの話を始めたいと思いますで。今日は盛りだくさんのスピーカー、プログラムがございます。日本語のプログラムを見せさせていただきます。最初は、ドゥスルドーフ市経済振興局国際ビジネスサービス課長のアネテ・クラークス様にあの話をしていただきますそれから株式会社メッセ・ドゥスルドーフ・ジャパンの代表取締役社長小原明子様にお越しいただいておりますそれからデジタルイノベーション・ハップ・ドゥスルドーフ・ハインランド戦略運営マネージャーのヤナ・ボーデンシュテッドさんから話を伺いたいたと思いますそれから本日特別に
お話しいただくのは、進出企業の事例として、西山製麺株式会社の代表取締役社長、西山隆様でございます。まあ、こういったプログラムで、こう1時間をあの皆さんと一緒に過ごしたいと思います。まあ、Zoom の案内はすでにあの何回かやっておりますので、まあ、ここでぜひあのその質問をしてほしいんですが、この質問のボタンを使って質問をあの記入していただければありがたいです。もちろん、後ほどのディスカッションの時も手を挙げていただければできるだけ参加させていただきます何か技術的な問題等がございましたら、まあ、チャットファンクションも使ってください。今回も通訳機能がついてますのであの、自分が聞きたい言語をお選びください。So,、uh, now I would first like、uh, to start、uh, with、uh, showing our guests today. Uh, Minasama, dozo, uh, oh, hi, kudasai. So, uh, we have from、uh, Dusseldorf, of course,、uh, Annette Clerks and、uh, Jana Bodenstedt. And、uh, then we have、uh, my colleague Astrid Becker, also from Dusseldorf. And、uh, then we have, as a special guest today, from Sapporo. Uh, Takashi Nishiyama, and、uh, we are very happy to have you all、uh, on board. Uh, Wara san is uh, probably sitting in our、uh, next door office. As you know, m e s s e d u s s e l d o r f is located right next to our office uh, in uh, the new Otani complex in Tokyo. So,、uh, thank you very much. And now I would like to ask.、Um, Ms. Becker to give us uh, her uh, greetings. Dozo Yoroshiku Onegaishimasu. Thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon from North Rand, Australia again. Thank you very much for joining our third webinar of the NRW Cities and Region series today. In this series of webinars, We introduce to you the communities in North Rhine Westphalia that join us in our cooperation agreement with the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. <clears throat> Together, we want to foster the market entry of small and middle enterprises from Tokyo to North Rhine Westphalia and the market entry of companies from North Rhine Westphalia to Tokyo. We hope that with these seminars, we can give a good impression of the welcoming culture for Japanese small and middle enterprises. And the high potential of business opportunities in North Rhine Westphalia. Today, we welcome very much the presentation of Dusseldorf, the capital city of our state. Dusseldorf maybe does not need so much of an introduction here, as it is the unrivaled center of Japanese business activities in Germany. Home of the largest Japanese community in Europe and a very well known international business city with strong connections all over Europe and the world. As metropolis on the Rhine, Dusseldorf is one of the five most important internationally strongly intertwined economic centers in Germany. It is located in the heart of the Rhine Ruhr metropolitan region and Such in the central transition area of logistics and trade in Europe. The Rhine Ruhr metropolitan region is an economic region and an urban agglomeration along the rivers Rhine and Ruhr in North Rhine Westphalia. It represents one of the largest agglomerations within the European megalopolis and the largest in Germany. In the 20 independent cities and 10 districts of the Rhine Ruhr region, around 11 million inhabitants live on almost 10,000 square kilometers. Around 9 million people live within a radius of 50 kilometers from the city of Dusseldorf as the regional center. 
Within this metropolitan region, Düsseldorf is of outstanding function as a gateway to North Rhine-Westphalia, Germany, and Europe, and from here to the world. Düsseldorf Airport is the third largest airport in Germany, and several wine ports serve the needs of industries for the transport of goods to and from the North Sea ports and as far as the Black Sea. Messe Düsseldorf, the Düsseldorf trade fair company, with 25 leading international trade fairs, is another important factor for the economic importance of the city. The favorable location climate for economic innovation and business startups can be seen in the relatively high number of newly founded companies. Düsseldorf is home to NRW's DigiHub Rhineland and owns a leading position in Germany as Startup Hub, Startup Hub characterized by startups primarily in the field of research intensive industries. The city is also the seat of 22 universities, including the renowned Heinrich Heine University and the Düsseldorf Art Academy. The good reputation of Düsseldorf reaches far beyond the favorable conditions for doing business. It is well known also for leisure time for its old town, nicknamed the longest bar in the world, its shopping boulevard, Königsallee, and other attractions as numerous museums and galleries, uh, Rhine Promenade and the modern Media Harbor, a modern space for creative companies, exhibitions and lifestyle events built on the site of a former industry harbor. In fact, Düsseldorf has a long tradition as a city of the arts. The Düsseldorf Art Academy gained importance as one of the most important training centers for landscape and genre painting as early as the 19th century under the name of the Düsseldorf School of Painting. The second high point in the development of Düsseldorf as an art city followed in the second half of the 20th century, when among other things, Josef Beuys taught at the Art Academy. The city of Düsseldorf is just as popular as a place to stay and study for artists as it is for art collections and museums. Düsseldorf's major museums are primarily dedicated to the art of the 19th, the 20s and the 21st centuries. Düsseldorf has also made a name for itself as a city of sports. Around 112,000 people in Düsseldorf participate in popular sports in 369 clubs. And as I learned yesterday, Five athletes from Düsseldorf won medals at the Olympic Games in Tokyo this year. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, there is so much more to say about Düsseldorf, but I do hope that with my short introduction, I could raise your appetite to learn more directly from our colleague of the Düsseldorf Economic Development Office, Annette Klaps, and all presenters today. Thank you very much for your attention. Bekasan, thank you so much uh, for this wonderful introduction. え、皆さんどうもありがとうございました。え、それでは私はこれであのプレゼンテーションをサイドシェアさせていただきます。So uh, thank you. ありがとうございました。And now we come to Düsseldorf. それではドゥスルトフに参りましょう。Klerksan, uh, Yokoso. Uh, so, uh, Dusseldorf, uh, Shino, ano, Kezai Shinko Kyokuwa, Tokuni, Koyu, Omani, Koyu service, or take your stay or limas. Ma, Kuashkua, Korekara, ano, uh, Hanashi, Sareru, Kato, Moimaska, ano, uh, Klerksan, wa, o, Naganen, え、あの、ディスルドフ氏ノミナラズ、え、あの、貿易投資の仕事に携わっておりますので、今日ここで話してくださることはあの、とてもあの、嬉しいと存じます。じゃあ、え、クラックさん、え、uh, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Lohr, for the kind introduction. And also thank you very much, Astrid Becker, for the kind presentation of Düsseldorf already. I think I could almost skip my presentation because you covered 
so many points already. So sorry if there is some repetition with my presentation now. Um, I would like to thank NRW Global Business for hosting today's meeting, for organizing it, and for giving us the chance to reach out to new companies in Japan, to show them the opportunities that are there in Dusseldorf and in the region, and to invite them to join a flourishing business community of Japanese companies in Dusseldorf and also in the wider region of North Rhine-Westphalia. I think it's a great initiative to combine the strengths of Dusseldorf and all the other cities that are participating in just showcasing that there is so much more in Dusseldorf and in NRW and that this is basically beating almost any other region in Europe and in Germany as far as business opportunities for Japanese companies and as far as business friendliness for Japanese companies is concerned. May I ask you to click, Mr. Lohr? <laughs> so let us just zoom into Dusseldorf and see where it is located. And you can just see that it is right in the center of North Rhine-Westphalia, in the center of the Rhine-Ruhr region, with 500,000 companies, 11.4 million inhabitants in the Rhineland area. And the city of Dusseldorf is, from the point of view of companies that are choosing a location to go to, it is a dynamic, a resilient, and a future-proof location. So if you look for a place to go to, this is a safe place to join. And in terms of internationality and uh, from the point of view of international companies, around about 40 to 45 percent of all the foreign direct investment projects that come to North Rhine Westphalia per year come to Dusseldorf. And this is basically due to the fact that it is the capital, that it is the desk of the Rhein-Ruhr area. This is the tradition of the city, the DNA of the city. The city has always been the desk, the administrative and business center of the wider region. And as a that, it is also um, the first choice for many Japanese companies. So Dusseldorf is right at the center of the Japanese business community. And from here, you can easily cooperate with a lot of other potential locations, business partners, etc. The real strength of this region here is the fact that from nowhere else in Europe, you can reach as many companies and clients directly within this radius that um, Astrid Becker earlier on mentioned, 500 kilometers around Dusseldorf. It is the densest populated and also densely in terms of business companies um, opportunities area in Europe. And this is a huge market opportunity to tap into. Could you please click? Exactly. So there are some figures that show what Dusseldorf is all about. As a city, it is rather small with just 640,000 inhabitants, really, really small. During the day, it becomes a million city because there are so many commuters coming into town and there are 430, 531 employees working in the town. So that just shows that Dusseldorf is very much the engine of the region and is very dynamic and economically far more important than the size of the city just shows. And the figure that I find most impressive on this slide is the figure that people from 184 nations live in Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf has a tradition of being very welcoming to people from basically all over the world, welcome them, help them to make friends, People here are very open. So if you move to Dusseldorf from Japan, there is a huge Japanese culture and community, and we will cover this topic later on in a little bit more detail. But it is also open to people from other nations. And that is an important message to companies that are coming from Japan to Dusseldorf, because one trend that we have noticed recently is that Japanese companies in particular, they do not just bring over expats from Japan or hire local talents. They also hire a lot of international talents. I've just visited the new R&D center of Asahi Kasei the other week. And there are so many people working there from Eastern Europe, from, from the Arab world, from India. It is a mixture. And you can, as a company, only flourish in an environment that is so open that you can just not connect only with the Dusseldorf and German business culture and the business culture of Japan, but also in an environment that is open to talents from all over the world. And if you could click further, one of the key features of Dusseldorf is this 
very unique combination of being a 10 minute city, a cozy, a small place with huge opportunities. So 10 minute city means that Dusseldorf is geographically speaking, very well connected. Uh, Astrid Becker already mentioned the airport, the fourth largest airport in Germany. Uh, from the city center, you can get there in like 10 minutes. The exhibition center, Ms. O'Hara is going to cover the strengths of the exhibition center later on, is very close to the airport. The airport is very well connected to the railway system from Dusseldorf Dusseldorf, you can basically cover all sorts of logistics. There is a harbor there for the transportation of heavy goods and so on and so on. So what makes Dusseldorf so unique is it is a small city. It's ge geographically and from a, a transport point of view, very well connected. So if you're looking for a place to basically start your European business and to manage a European business, Dusseldorf is very effective because from here you can re easily cover Europe. And it's from a point of view of travel necessities, one of the most efficient cities you can go to in Germany. For instance, if you compare this to Berlin or to Munich, the airport is so far outside of the city center that you waste a lot of time. From Dusseldorf, you just jump on a plane and you're in Munich, in, in London, in Moscow, wherever you want to go in just no time and getting to the airport very quick. Next slide, please. Düsseldorf has a lot of advantages and it has one disadvantage as well in terms of marketing the city. Um, I know when we were asked by our partners from the Tokyo Metropolitan Government about the particular strength of Düsseldorf, it is always so difficult to point out one industry, one sector that Düsseldorf is particularly strong in because there is a very diverse economy here. There are companies from a lot of different industries flourishing in the city. So this is, from a marketing point of view, a disadvantage because we cannot just say this sort of is the finance center, is the marketing and admin and, and uh, um, creative industry center, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's always very strong with a lot of topics. Um, but I would say that for one topic in particular it is very important at the moment. And that is the fact of the DNA of being the desk of the rhine ruhr region. Because we are now in a period of transition where a lot of change is taking place in industries. And Dusseldorf being a state capital administrative center for a lot of these new technologies, we do not have the space in town. If you think of hydrogen, for instance, we do not have a lot of reserve space to have, you know, hydrogen plants set up in town. But what sets this, this, this sort of apart from other places is that here you will have the infrastructure of finding the innovation partners, and in particular in the field of digitalization that will help shape the future in basically all the industries that are mentioned on this slide. So from the point of view of a company that is selling and offering solutions in innovative industries. Dusseldorf is a great place to find partners in many different industries and to set up a sales unit, a marketing unit, an R&D unit that is basically working with clients in the market in Europe to tailor products from Japan to the needs of the German or the European clients. So this is basically what Dusseldorf offers in terms of business functionality to companies from Japan. If you could just click further. Thank you. To give you an idea of what the economy of Düsseldorf is all about, we wanted to show you a few products that originate from Düsseldorf. So for instance, Henkel is a well-known brand and you know their washing um, um, uh, um, so uh, Persil is one of the best known brands from Dusseldorf. You always associate Dusseldorf with Altbier and we will bring it to Japan hopefully next September again, next year in September to our Dusseldorf evening in Tokyo. This would be our first big trip that we will do abroad next year after the pandemic. Um, but there are many more products that you would probably not necessarily think of. There is tea being produced in Dusseldorf, cars are being produced in Dusseldorf, pipes, big projects and big uh, industry in Dusseldorf, steel pipes, and also uh, many machinery things, Komatsu having their German uh, head and European head office here in Dusseldorf. So there are many, many, many different industries. But one industry at the moment I think is fairly crucial and that is 
5G telecommunication Vodafone. Um, because a lot of innovation that is taking place at the moment relies on the fact that 5G is being rolled out and that new business models are possible. And if you could just click further. And Dusseldorf very much because of the fact that Vodafone has its head office in Dusseldorf, that Deutsche Telekom is just 30 minutes away from Dusseldorf in Bonn. Dusseldorf attracts many, many players in that industry from all over the world. And if you are selling and developing new business cases in that field, then Dusseldorf is an ideal place to launch it in Germany, in Europe. And you are very much invited to join us and to join this cluster here. If you could click further, please. There are also some other industries that we are very actively promoting at the moment as Office of Economic Development. One is in the field of digital health. We have already quite a lot of companies from Asia in particular, from Japan, that are showcasing their innovations in digital health, in robotics, for instance, and so on, in Dusseldorf. Medica is the main trade show in the field. Dusseldorf is the platform to sell this basically globally, but in partic particular to German and European clients. So any company from that sector is very much in invited to join. If you could click a little further, because then there will some text be shown up. Exactly. Thank you. And not just make use of the Medica as a trade show and platform, but also to join a growing and good cluster of life sciences, digital health, biotech companies in the region. You might not know, but most of the um, COVID tests that were sold in Europe and all over the world are being produced by companies that are located here in the region or that originate from, from, from the Heinrich Heine University. Key again to name one German company, Seagen to name a Korean company. So all these industries are very strong here and we invite you to join this cluster as well. If you could just move on exactly and just click a little further so that we can see the text as well. Thank you. Um, Dusseldorf is also right in the center of a automotive industry area. You might associate automotive industries in Germany with Munich or with Stuttgart. This is where our Wolfsburg, this is where the big brands and the manufacturers are located. But there is manufacturing in the region as well. And there is a lot of automotive supply. And this is also an industry in transition. So if you're working in this kind of industry, Dusseldorf is an ideal platform to reach out to new clients, to develop new products jointly with various brands. Dusseldorf is brand neutral. From here, you can deal with all the German brands, but also with the French or Italian and so on. So it is a proven location for innovators in the field of automotive. And you are very much invited to join us for that topic as well. And one final topic is the topic of sustainability. Um, Dusseldorf is probably not, in terms of hydrogen, the location you would first think of in NRW because our, our neighbors in Duisburg and Essen and so on, they bring probably a little bit more to the table. But what Dusseldorf offers, it is the location where you can basically talk to all these digital minds that are behind the topic of hydrogen and 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 and. You know, if this is the field you're working in, please come to Dusseldorf. And just one, one topic that I would like to touch upon is the topic of sustainability and climate neutrality. Dusseldorf has set itself very, very ambitious goals in terms of climate neutrality that we want to achieve. By 2035, the city aims to be climate neutral. And there will be a lot of initiatives run by the city on this topic. And we are inviting companies to join us on this road to climate neutrality and to become part of, of this kind of initiative by the city. It will be launched later this month officially. So this is a bit of a very fresh news. But if you are in green technologies, if this is a topic that you are working in, then you are heavily invited to join us and we will have a good cluster and network and a lot of programs to help you connect with players in the region and in town. So if you could click further. And just a little few more clicks because our friends, thank you very much. Um, you mentioned already in the introduction the fact that there are universities in Dusseldorf. 
and we have good universities, strong universities, good sense of entrepreneurship, many interesting topics. But what I think what makes Dusseldorf so unique when it comes to talent and universities is the fact that it is right in the center of this university network from the federal state of North Rhine-Westphalia. Because if you really look at the number of universities of the topics that are being basically taught, then this area is one of the key innovation areas in Germany and in Europe, and it's heavily underrated internationally. I can only un underline that from RWTH Aachen to like TU Technical University Dortmund, there is so much talent that you can tap into. From Düsseldorf, you can reach them. Düsseldorf is a commuter city, so talents from these places tend to come to our place to basically start their career. So it's a good place to come to Düsseldorf if you want to reach out to talents from local universities and combine this with hiring internationally as well. If we could click further, please. And also another click. <laughs> no, going back, please. One, thank you. Sorry, I'm sorry, I can't. Thank you, that's now correct. So I've, talking, I've spoken a lot about business opportunities, but Dusseldorf is not just a place to do, do business. It's also a very livable place. I said Becca covered that already. And this is an important factor to take away. The work-life balance here is really, really good. And the city is very international. It is creative. There is the arts. There is this sense of Rhinish, you know, mood, openness, connecting with people. So people coming to Dusseldorf from abroad, they find it a nice place to live. And this is crucial if you are the HR manager of a company, you will find it easy to bring people to Dusseldorf because it's an attractive location. And not just for the person that you are hiring, but also for the partner who is probably coming with that person. This is very important if you want to grow a, for instance, European headquarter in Dusseldorf. Could we just click further? And now I would like to say a few words just about the business community of Japanese companies in Dusseldorf. It was already mentioned, Dusseldorf is right at the center of the business community in NRW. So a lot of companies might not just be located in Dusseldorf, but in the surrounding cities, but many of the managers, the Japanese managers of these city, uh, companies, they live in Dusseldorf. To give you just a few figures, in town we have 410 Japanese companies, so it's a huge community locally. Um, there are 550 companies in the region. There are more than 8,000 people from Japan living in and around Dusseldorf. Um, Japanese companies are an important factor to the local economy because they hire so many people. So there are so many people working for these companies. They do so much turnover and, and from our city government, they are very much appreciated business community that we take very close care of. Um, and we also have a lot of new Japanese companies that are joining us year on, year on, which is making us very proud and humble. And we are quite grateful for this tight network that is helping us in, in achieving these goals. Um, as you can see by just the few logos that we've put on the slide to show you the type of companies that we are here, that we have here from Japan, it is a right mixture from high tech to consumer goods, basically everything. So, um, and in terms of the Japanese infrastructure in Dusseldorf, this is really unique and outstanding and you won't find a similar network anywhere in Germany, probably not even in Europe. So we have a consulate general, we have the Japanese club in Dusseldorf, it's I think the biggest Japanese club in Europe. There is a network of supermarkets, bakeries, bookshops, department stores, Immermannstraße is known as the Little Tokyo and just some hot news we will also have Japanese street signs um, because this, this decision has been taken by the city government that in Immermannstraße and that part of town, some of the street signs will also be in J Japanese, not just in German. That just underlines how important we think that Japan is. And this importance that we put onto the Japanese business culture has also been proven in, Christ, in times of crisis. During the pandemic, we took care of a lot of issues that Japanese companies had with topics like residence, entry, vaccination, and so on. So the city government has made it its goal and mission to be at the side of the Japanese companies in Dusseldorf. And 
I'll skip the topic of attractive location because Düsseldorf is more expensive than Essen and, and probably uh, Duisburg and so on, but it's more affordable than London and Munich. Um, what I would like to focus on at the end of my presentation is there is a strong bond here with Japanese companies and there is also a team that is supporting Japanese companies. If we could click further with a lot of services, I'm not going to touch upon the services because they are the similar ones that all the economic development uh, uh, agencies offer. But here in Dusseldorf, there is a team of four people taking care of Japanese companies and three people, I'm just the only one not speaking Japanese, but three people speak Japanese, know the Japanese business culture and are always available for support and for help in starting and growing a business. And this is how you can get in touch with us. So thank you very much for your att um, attention. Can I just start, start more? Yeah, do you see this card? Took it. Yes, please. では続きまして株式会社メッセージスルドルフジャパンのお原と申します。今回その東京都とノルストのドライブスラーパレンシュの間で中小企業の発展に向けての覚書が交わされたということ、とても嬉しく思っております。で、ドイツはもともとあのメ
、えー、主催団体が登録しているこのユフィというこの展示会連盟という組織があるんですけれどもそちらに登録されている国際的展示会986本のうちドイツの中で開催されているもので、えー、と認証されているものが113本そのうちデュッセルドルフの開催が30本なかなかの数字だと思いますちなみに日本,の日本で開催されている展示会でこのユフィの、えー、認定を受けることができているのはここに書いてあるジムトフとフーデックスの日本だけになっております。次お願いします。でこちらがデュッセルドルフメッセデュッセルドルフの主な五つの領域ですけれです。はい。ちょっと待ってくださいチャットが。<笑>はい。で、こちらに、あの、あえて日本語にはしておりませんけれども、えー、一番最初のが機械系、素材系、二番目としては、あの、えっと、小売系、小売系、三番目として健康医学系、え、四番目ライフスタイルビューティーで、五番目レイジャーと書いてありますけれども、非常に日本の産業領域と馴染みがいいというのが、えー、メッセデステルドフの特徴で、あの、日本からの出展が多分一番多いドイツのメッセではないかと思います。ですね。で、えっ、ー、と、待ってください。で特に、えー、そうですね。例えばその一番のその機械系のところではこの K ですとかインターパック。印刷機械のドゥルッパといった展示会がとても有名ですけれども、えー、中小企業と、あそう、製造業ですね。製造業というのは、日本の中小企業の中でも一番働く人数が多いというところで、やはり中小企業、今回そのテーマとなっている中小企業にとっても非常に馴染みがいいイベントが多いんじゃないかと思っております。ですね。はい。で、こちらが主なロゴといっても非常にたくさんあるんですけれども、あの、先ほどの国際的な認証という中の基準にも、をはるかに超えるようなステータスを目指しておりまして、多くが海外出展比率7割以上、海外来場比率5割以上ということで、これが他の,ちょのドイツのメッセともちょっと違うメッセージ、ステルドロフの強みだと思っています。先ほどアネットさんもおっしゃっていたように、そのやはりデュッセルドルフ市自体が非常にインターナショナルなカルチャーを持っているというところからこの戦略も来ているのかなと思っています。で、このグローバルナンバーワンを何世目指すのかっていうところもいろいろあると思うんですけれども、やっぱりメリットは非常に大きい。で、これはあの、ドイツの他のメッセをいろいろも私も見てはいるんですけれども、明らかにですね、メッセ、デュッセルドルフのメッセは、他のもの、他のメッセとちょっと違いまして、例えば、ドイツ企業であっても出展しているときにあとすべて英語でプレゼンテーションしている。もちろんあの、ドイツ語のセッションもありますけれども、資料ですとかブーステストが全部英語で作っている。それぐらいのグローバルな存在価値が必要であるということ、出展側もわかっているということですね。あともう一つは、これはあの、その三つ目のポイントですけれども、あの、私どもの出展者からお伺いしたことなんですけれども、あの、日本から出展することでもちろん輸出も実績として発生するんですけれども、予想しなかった、あの、副次的効果の一つとして、あの、じゃあ逆に、あの、海外の製品の日本の代理店をやってくれないかというお話も受けたということなんですね。なので、やはり、あの、メッセというものは、インもあり、アウトもあるということで、グローバルであるということの展示会のメッセの利点というのはとても大きいものだというふうに言ってはおっしゃいらっしゃいました。で、ここが一番私の今回のポイントなんですけれども、あの、海外から日本の企業に寄せられる期待というのは非常に高いものがあります。で、これは、あの、私の体験なんですけれども、2019年のメディカ、あの、医療危機関係の展示会ですけれども、それに行きましたときに、まあ、空港に着いて、空港からバスを待っていたときに、あの、スイス人の女性に話しかけられまして、あとはメディカに来たのって言って、あの、彼女はスイスの商社の人だったんですけれども、あの、私たちは日本の針のない注射器を探して今回メディカに来たのよと。それぐらい、あの、来る方も日本の技術、日本の製品にフォーカスして事前調査をして、さらにアポを取った上で、あの、メディカにやってくる。それぐらいのやはり日本に、あの、絵の期待、評価、そしてそのビジネスがまとまっていく様っていうのを実際に展示会が始まる前に聞くことができて、私も非常に嬉しいなと思いました。で、
もう一つ最後に申し上げたいのが、その日本と,日本と,、えー、と欧州の SME の違いは一つだけということで、最初から国外市場を見ているかどうかということだけなんですね。というのは、あのー、私どものメッセージの出店のご相談を受けるときに、あの割と日本企業の方々が言うのは、我が社にはまだちょっと、例えばメディカへのデビューは早すぎるとか、そういったお声をいただくことも多いんですね。ただ、そんなことは決してなくて、先ほど申し上げたように、日本への期待は非常に大きいということが一つ。さらには、あの、欧州ですね、特に欧州をピックアップすれば、彼らは本当に最初から市場として、自国市場だけは見ていない。で最初からその EU 域内での,あのパートナーシップなり、えー、販路の開拓なりを目指している本当に日本企業のとの違いはここだけだと思うのでぜひ皆様にはあのぜひ自信を持っていただいてうちにはまだ早いということは絶対ないということだけ今日覚えていっていただければと思います。はいでコロナ禍でいろいろありましたけれども、メッセージ・ステルドルフはこれからもリアル店が一番のビジネスの発展の早道だと思っております。これはラバーフェアっていうのは、いわゆるあの恋人たちのラバーフェアと展示会のフェアをかけたあの、私たちの本社が好きなダジャレの一つなんですけれども、皆様といつかまたディステルドルフでお会いできることを楽しみにしております。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。そう、続きまして、ヤナ・ボーデンシュテッツさんに講演を賜りたいと思います。The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Konnichiwa. Yeah, I think we just saw greatly that Düsseldorf is a fantastic place for your business, and I'm really glad to have the opportunity today to show you why it is also a fantastic place. For startups to set up the business here. So, let me introduce you briefly how we can support you in this regard as the DigiHub Düsseldorf. The DigiHub is a regional innovation center.、Uh, sorry, click. <laughs> the DigiHub is a regional innovation center, and we are acting as matchmaker and accelerator. As matchmakers, we bring together different market players, connect startups. And companies with investors, universities, and scientists. And as an accelerator, we bring ideas from startups, but also from spin offs from companies and universities to the market to support teams with prototyping money. We are just one of five digital hubs that started in 2016 on the basis of a funding program of the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Innovation, Digitalization, and Energy of the State of Northern Westphalia to promote digitalization for startups as well as for companies. And luckily, as you can see here, we do not need to drive this on our own. We have a large network of well known and competent partners behind us, like the Messe Düsseldorf. Click. So, with our partners, <clears throat> we are working on four key tasks. We are organizing matchmaking events where we connect our startups with market players, companies, investors, and scientists, and where we give startups the opportunity to present their ideas to the public, to talk to experts, through lectures, and panel discussions. And we also have a format for very deep tech. Topics like the、uh, digital health we just saw earlier in our tech innovation nights. I will explain about our big lighthouse event, the Digital Demo Day, in a second. Click. We have developed our own accelerator program here in Dusseldorf called Ignition, and this supports early stage startups. Three times a year, we train five startups and offer them an extensive spectrum of co working, coaching, Contacts with companies and investors and rapid prototyping. So, from over 550 applications so far, we have selected and trained 63 startups with roughly 160 founders and invested more than 1.35 million euro of pre seed funding. Click. To be always on the latest technologies and innovations, we have expanded our think tank pillar, which focuses on current topics with surveys and studies. And there we had a recent look also in the business of、uh, hydrogen, which was quite exciting. And finally, we offer for our partners corporate services like the 5G AR hackathon we did for Huawei last year. 
Oberfläche schon. Lick. But our partner network, which you saw earlier, and our accelerator activities are not focused on Düsseldorf and NRW only. We are very glad and proud that we have a strong international partners supporting us. Since 2019, we maintain a very deep relationship with Jetro. As an official Jetro Global Acceleration Hub, we offer mentoring and matchmaking for Japanese startups here in Düsseldorf. These mentoring sessions are held by our managing directors, Peter and Clemens, or by mentors of our board corporate network. These mentoring lessons include researching and explaining opportunities of business on site, designing and brushing up the business models or strategies of fundraising. Based on the outcome of these mentoring sessions, I am then organizing the matchmaking of Japanese startups with local corporates or SMEs, which are possible candidates as partners or investors. Since 2020, we are also an official partner of XUP Tokyo Global Startup Accelerator Program. And in all these exchange programs, overall, we have supported now 17 startups in over the last months with our know-how and network to expand the business into the Düsseldorf Rhineland region. Because of the pandemic situation, of course, we had to organize the international exchange in the last one and a half years fully remotely. But as soon as traveling and physical meetings are possible again, we will continue our offering of special boot camps for international startups in our office in Düsseldorf again. As you see it here on the pictures. We offer, for example, for you a three to five day workshop on how to start business in Düsseldorf, get a product validation for Germany or European markets, and matchmaking with companies from the area. So this will enable you to really have a good start here in our fantastic city of Düsseldorf. On the pictures, you see some impressions from our exchange with Zero One Booster or a delegation of Tohoku Accelerator. So finally, I want to show you one fantastic international event we are doing to support this matchmaking activities I mentioned earlier. So we have our yearly Lighthouse event, this Digital Demo Day, which is Germany's leading startup trade fair and technology conference with a focus on B2B industrial tech and services. The Digital Demo Day started in 2017 as an exhibition day for young technology companies with a supporting conference program, including panel discussions and interesting keynotes. The focus has always been on experiencing digital trends and technologies, as well as networking and connecting startup founders with companies, SMEs and investors. At this year's Demo Day, just three weeks ago, we welcomed 150 national and international exhibitors and more than 2,000 visitors on site here in Düsseldorf, as well as online. At the main stage, we saw exciting keynotes, panel discussions about the key focus areas like startups in space, B2B platforms and glass, and quantum computing. And we also saw a real top-class startup pitch battle between 16 startups where a French team won the prize money of 3,000 euros sponsored by the NRW Bank. So I hope I could provide you quite a good and quick overview of our offering and could raise your interest for our international digitalization support. So if you are looking for additional information about the GIVAP and international activities, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much. Yeah, Bodenstedt-san, domo arigato gozaimashita. Tsuzukimashite, Nishiyama Seimen, kabushiki gaisha no daihyou torishimari yaku shachou Nishiyama Takashi-sama kara お話を賜りたいと思います。西山様どうぞよろしくお願いします。はい、西サポルでラーメンの方の製造をしております。西山製麺の代表の西山でございます。今日は札幌西山ヨーロッパ現米班こちらをなぜ NRW州のドゥステ
、えー、受けることができました。そのような話を少し進めさせていただこうかと思います。えー、今日はあの中小企業向けということでございますので、まさに私どもの会社、中小企業のど真ん中にいる会社でございます。えー、今日は、えー、ジュステルドルフ、そして東京の中小企業の皆様の、えーえー、お気になられるかと思います。何かの参考になれば、私も大変ありがたいと思います。では、進めさせていただきます。えー、まずあの会社の紹介でございます。西山製麺株式会社、1953年、ラーメン店さんの屋台からスタートした会社でございます。1955年、味噌ラーメンに合う、縮れた、弾力のある、卵入りのラーメン、こちらを開発しております。今現在でございますけれども、販路は国内外のラーメン専門店、スーパーマーケットなど32カ国、32カ国にメイドインジャパン、メイドイン北海道、メイドイン札幌の面の方を輸出しております。えー、海外の現地法人でございます。実はあの2014年、えー、西山製麺株式会社の最初の海外法人がドイツなんです。えー、2014年にデュステルドルフ、それからあ同じ年に米国、それから2019年度にシンガポール、こちらの方に、えー、会社を設立しております。えー、よく皆様、えー、市場規模から言うと、アジアが先じゃないか、次米国じゃないか、次、えー、欧州ではないか、というふうに言われるんですけれども、えー、西山製麺株式会社の場合はですね、全くその皆様の期待とは逆の、えー、パターンでこう歩んでおります。えー、今日はあの中小企業の皆様もおりますので、おられるかと思いますので、私、大企業の方が海外進出をするにあたって、あるいは中小企業の方が海外進出にするにあたって、えー、焦点の当て方が違ってくるかと思います。えー、大企業の方でございますけれども、何この市場規模、大きな市場を取りに行くというところでございますので、アジア、それから米国、欧州の順番になろうかと思います。中小企業の海外進出の強み、これは、あの、歴史なり、伝統なり、文化なり、ものづくりなり、こちらが中小企業の方は皆さん、あの、たけているところでございます。特に、欧州、歴史、伝統、文化、ここに価値を見出してくれる、えー、あの消費構造、非常にあの大きいものがございます。えー、ということで、私は中小企業の皆様、だから、だからこそ、欧州に、え、まず進出していただく。ドイツに進出していただく。そこでブランド価値をきちっと築いて、それで他のところに進出。というのでも遅くはないと思います。えー、大きな市場だけを取りに行くんであれば、大企業には叶いません。やはり中小企業は中小企業の強みを生かす順番があろうかと思います。えー、2019年度でございます。えー、業績拡大に向けて、えー、国際認証であります。ISO、それから FSSC、こちらの方の取得の方を今進めているところでございます。えー、少し余談になりますけれども、えー、では日本のラーメンがどのように、えー、誕生したのかという話を、1分か2分くらいで簡単に話をさせていただきたいと思います。日本のラーメンというのは今、歴史は300年ほどでございます。中国から伝わりまして、日本で日本古来の醤油、日本古来の醤油、これが中国のラーメンに溶け込みまして、日本でラーメンというのが進化しましたで。札幌、ここでは日本古来の味噌ラー味噌でございます。味噌が札幌で、えーラーメンに溶け込んで、味噌ラーメンというのが生まれました。もう今、ドイツ、今、今、マンストラッサ、ストラッセの方にも、いろいろと匠さんをはじめ、ラーメン店が、味噌ラーメンってあろうかと思いますけど、札幌生まれでございます。今から65年前、まだ65年の歴史がございません。札幌で生まれた、あ多分、日本食でございます、えー。このラーメンでございますけれども、これから各日本で、えー、醤油なり味噌ラーメンが生まれたように、各国でいろんな食文化と合わさって、えー、進化がどんどんしていく。えー、日本食の中でも、唯一この、寿司以上に大きな市場が生まれるのではないかと、このように思っているところでございます。えー、私の持ち時間10分でございますので、あと5分余りでございます。それでは、なんで、えー、ノルトライムエスパーレンシュ、デュステルドルフに法人を設立したのかというところでございますけども、えー、この美味しいラーメンを提供したいというお客様、えー、インマンマンストラスタリー、えー、たくみさんございます。えー、たくみさんとの社長さんの出会いがあります。西山さん。北海道、日本の美味しい素材、麺なり、タレなりをドイツのに送ってくれと。ドイツの方では、我々がそれを美味しいラーメンとして、価値のあるラーメンとして、ドイツの方で調理をしてお客様に提供する。そしてさらには、ドイツから、えー、日本の美味しいラーメンを欧州各国に提供していきたい。えー、こんなような話が、匠の社長様とございました。えー、まずあの、匠さんと一緒に、ジュストルダープから美味しいラーメンをヨーロッパに飲みましょうと。というところからスタートしていくところでございます。えー、それともう一つ、デュッセルドルフ。私ども行きました。日系企業が多くございます。日系のコミュニティが多いです。
それから生活もしやすい、それから欧州の中心地だ、アクセスも良い、えー、あともう一つですけども、私もいろいろと海外を歩きました、ドイツ、えー、なぜか私、非常に合うんです、はい、好,きな好きな国です、ドイツ人と日本人、気質が似てるのか,かもしれません。えー、ということで、私はドイツに惚れ込んだ日本人の一人でございます。えー、海外の法人が初めてドイツのオフィステルドラフで、えー、設立できたというところ、私も大変嬉しく思っているところでございます。えー、それではあの、設立、設立にあたりましてのご苦労、苦労話、これを少しさせていただこうかと思います。えー、日本の会社、海外進出にあたりましては、よく、えー、コンサルタントの方を入れて、日本で、えー、いろいろと学んで、海外進出をどうしようかと考える方が多いです。いろんなあセミナーなり、たくさんあります、日本では。これはやめてください。私はまず現地に行きまして、現地の空気を吸う。これがまず大事です。大事です。えー、現地に行って、情報収集は現地に行きます。現場で考える。これをもっと意識してやりました。えー、初めての海外法人、えー、コンサルタントは通しておりません。えー、日本での情報収集、えー、先ほど、え、NRW 州の方も、校舎の方がジャパンですから、話がございましたけれども、ジェトロさんに飛び込みました。ジェトロさんに飛び込んで、日本で収集しました。それか、ジェトロさんの方から、ドイツに行って、ジュストルワークのジェトロさんに行くと、もっともっと現場でいろんな収集できますよと、え、アドバイスを受けて、私はジュストルワークに飛びました。そこで、え、NRW 州校舎の皆様、それから、ジュストルドルフの市役所のジャパンデスクの皆様、日本人の商工会議所の皆様、いろんな方にご紹介をいただきて、橋渡しをいただきました。まさにジェトロさんがあったからこそ、私は海外進出ができたのかと思います。どうぞ中小企業,中小企業の皆様、まずジェトロさんのを、まず訪問してください。とにかく情報がたくさんあります。それと、あの、現場の方に、世界各国でございますので、現場にまず情報を集めていただくのがよろしいかと思います。日本での情報収集はジェトロさん、それと NRW ジャパンさん、の方にも、私の方は、東京の方に行って、情報の方をいただきました。当時の三重木部長さんだったと思います。非常に助けていただきました。ありがとうございます。それから、銀行、会社の法人手続きにあたりましては、たくみ様、お客様、たくみ様の社長様に、ドイツ銀行の銀行の口座開設、から法人登記、こんな、このようなことも、お客様のに、えー、一緒にご同行いただきました。というようなことで、えー、設立にあたっては、えー、まず、まずとにかく現場に行く。これがまず第一です。現場に行くと、いい話、悪い話、ご苦労話、たくさん聞こえてきます。日本にいた、いるだけではダメです。ダメです。えー、と私は思います。えー、私の持ち時間があと2分余りになりました。えー、最後になりますけれども、えー、ジュステルドルフ市役所、ジャパンデスクの皆さんに助けていただいたエピソード、こちらを話の方少しご紹介させていただこうかと思います。えー、2010、ドイツ法人はですね、えー、2014年に設立いたしましたけれども、2013年の10月、えー、私はデュステルドルフに来まして、えー、会社の法人の手続きをしました。最初ですけれども、さ今、札幌西山ヨーロッパ、原米ハーデ、当期になっておりますけれども、最初は西山ヨーロッパ、原米ハーデ、銀行口座の開設、それから当期の方を進めてまいりました。えー、今でも覚えております。えー、午前中早い時間に全部終わりまして、それから、あえー、ジャパンデスクのヘイバーさんでございましたけれども、えー、ノックをしまして、ご報告、あの、ご報告に行きました。今、手続きがすべて終わりました。ということで、ご報告に行きましたら、えー、すぐにですね、電話がかかってきましたですね、ジャパンデスクの方。いや、ヘイバーさんからですね、西山さん、西山ヨーロッパという会社、何か聞いたことがある。ということで、私の方でちょっと少し調べました。ただ西山さん、最近、設立登記になってます。えー、ドイツは同じ野号の、同じ社名のものは登記になりませんから、えー、すぐに会社名を変えてください。でないと、これは、キャあの、法務局で登記になりませんと言われまして、えー、私は実はですね、翌日、もう日本に帰る予定してたんです。ということで、その場で言われましたんで、え西山ヨーロッパ何に亀よそうだな。札幌だから、頭に札幌つけちゃえと。札幌西山ヨーロッパ。えー、3分で、えー、私は会社も決めました。えー、それで、えー、ドイツ銀行の方には、えー、すぐに、えー、手続きの、えー、申請をし直し。それから、あ登記簿の方にも、えー、厚い分厚い書類の一番上にですね
、えー、西山をヨーロッパから札幌西山ヨーロッパに社名変更するという一枚の紙をかましてもらいまして、えー、トークのをかけまして、翌日日本の方に戻ってきたところでございます。えー、あそこで、えー、ジャパンデスクさんのヘーバーさんから、えー、あのアドバイス、ご上限がなければ、今のうちの会社もなかったらかなと。まさにこ、このように手厚い、えー、かゆいところに手が届くという手厚いご支援をいただけるのは、えー、ノルトラインウェルズパレンシュ、NRW 州のジャパンデスク。えー、ジャパン、NRW、えー、のジャパン、えー、校舎の皆様、それからあドイツのジュステルドルフのジャパンデスクの皆様かと思います。えー、私は今でも感謝を申し上げることころでございます、えー。このようなところで、私の方から会社設立の日を、えー、話の作法をさせていただきました。どうもありがとうございます。どうもありがとうございました。素晴らしいプレゼンテーションで、おそらく西山さんにこれからさっとこう問い合わせが入ってくるんじゃないかと。思いますが、まあ、それをまたあの弊社に振っていただければありがたいです。ありがとうございます。えー、はい、えー、さて、あの私のタイムマネジメントがあの良くなくて、あの実はこのイベントあの勝手ではございますが、あの15分延長させていただきます。えー、そこでまずあの。皆さんのスピーカーの方々に本当にこうあの御礼をしたいと思います。ありがとうございました。クラックさん、大原さん、それからボールンシュテッツさん、それから西山様、それからあの、まあ、たくさんあの質問もあの来ておりますが、あの一部チャットであのすでにあのご覧になっていらっしゃるかもしれませんが、えー、一つピックアップしますと、uh, says here, Yana, thank you for the comprehensive presentation today. I hope our young stars will contact you to find the best opportunity for them and your people. I found your nice web page for the introduction of your company and found you also as a wonderful tennis player. So you kept this secret from us.、Uh, Keiichi Ida from Nishin Kiko.、Oh. あのどうぞよろしくお願いします。え、uh, uh, yeah, I think、uh, we have uh, uh, seen uh, in all the breadth of、uh, opportunities and, and、uh, possibilities uh, that uh, Dusseldorf is really an excellent、uh, location to do,、uh, to conduct business with.、Um, Uh, companies in, in Nordrhein Westfalen, in Germany, and in Europe. And、um, from that point of view, I, I'm sure that、uh, those companies which have followed us, especially from the Tokyo、uh, Metropolitan Government、uh, Nordrhein Westfalen program,、uh, will have found many uh, interesting uh, uh, information s and uh, suggestions. Um, I think uh, uh, I would like to uh, apologize, uh, but uh, uh, there was one question from Kido san, who unfortunately has left now, but I will try to mention it again、uh, as a final point. Dusseldorf to Nihon to no Koryu Niori, Tano Doitsu, Chusho Toshi to Hikaku Ste, Dokunichi ni Totte, Dokuhitsu Subeki, Ichiban no Diten wa. どのようなことでしょうか So she's asking、uh, what uh, is uh, the kind of special,、uh, specially to be mentioned、uh, point、uh, of Dusseldorf, the ex strong exchange between Dusseldorf and Japan.、Uh, in, if you compare it to other uh, German uh, cities. And I think.、Uh, Uh, Klaxon uh, mentioned this,、uh, and, and I always feel this is a very important point.、Um, the depth of relationship,、uh, the depth of support you get, the depth of available、uh, stakeholders and supporters which you can get in Dusseldorf is really uh, uh, much, much、uh, larger than in.、Uh, um, Any other location in Germany,、uh, including some、uh, cities outside of Nordrhein Westfalen. But、uh, as Klerksan also rightly pointed out,、uh, it is、um, 
of course, the strength of Dusseldorf that it is playing together very well with all the other uh, cities and, and uh, institutions in the whole area of Nordrhein-Westfalen. So we are a team uh, Nordrhein-Westfalen, team NRW, uh, which is ready to uh, support uh, all the uh, um, Japanese uh, companies already there, but also, of course, uh, all the uh, Japanese companies and institutions which are planning to come uh, to Nordrhein-Westfalen from now. Uh, so um, I would like to give uh, our uh, speakers a short uh, time for a short closing statement, if you wish. Uh, Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Leur, for um, yeah, the, the, the opportunity to say a few words. Thank you to the audience. Sorry for speaking a little too long. I have the reputation of doing that. Uh, but I get carried away because the topic of Japanese business relations with Dusseldorf is one that is very close to our hearts. So we love to talk about it. Wonderful. Um, it's, it's a, a sincere invitation. Come to Dusseldorf. Make use of the advice that Nishi Yama-san gave you. Con make contact with JETRO, with NRW Global Business, with the Japan Desk of the Office of Economic Development. We are there to support you and we can link you with a network of companies and advisors that can help you on this big move from Japan to Germany to Europe. Thank you. Ohara-san. I cannot hear you. ありがとうございました。え、ロイドさんはじめ皆さんがおっしゃっていただいている通り、え、ディスルドルフは州内またドイツ国内とのネットワークもとてもいいものを持ってまして、あの、メッセージをディスルドルフ、私はメッセージを
それから何かあの直接私どもにあの聞きたければあの問い合わせ先はこちらでございます。私、ルアをはじめ、杉崎、八木橋と楠木がご連絡をお待ちしております。それからデュッセルドーフの方ではあのアストリッペカ部長とヤンゼン。日本担当のヤンゼンが待っております。それではどうもありがとうございました。本当にあの時間をオーバーしてしまいまして申し訳ないんですが、あの引き続きよろしくお願いいたします。本日はどうもありがとうございました。シューネスバーホネンでどうぞ良い週末をお過ごしくださいませ。バイバイ。